Hello and what's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you're coming back, oh boy, we have a very informative video today. So version 5.1 is about to end on the Chinese server and it's about to come in on the global server very very soon. So you know what time it is, it's time for the monthly version review. So before Elijah hit the global, today we are answering three main questions. How is the update? Is Alicia FTP friendly and what's exactly her lore in future content? So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. This update was a continuation for the Alasian Realm Fiesta. New Valkyries were added and later on a new update as well. The update contained a new chapter about World Serpent deciding to send Mei back to the top and stopping her from continuing her journey in the Alasian Realm. And it ends on Raven staying in the Elysian Realm for her own special goals. And that would explain in the future why she's actually an imaginary type Valkyrie. But that's for another video. Now I won't go further in the details so you can get the chance to enjoy it as well. But I'd say whatever you see in the Elysian Realm is gonna leave a very heavy impact. Now the new battle suit Elysia joined us and I feel like Mihoyo lost their mind by, by making her farmable. I'll explain why in a little bit. Lastly, we have Magical Girl Seely outfit and for a special reason, Mihoyo decided to bring back Dark Bolt Jonin's special event. And I believe it or not, I believe that Mihoyo did that on purpose. And that would be it for this update, honestly. There's not much to talk about. Now, Alicia. The main star of the show and trust me I mean every word when I say she's too good to be farmable. If Elysia was paid to win Valkyrie I would still pay to get her and her sticks and her weapon because of how good she is and I believe she officially surpassed Stasian Nymph in the meta tier list. Now Elysia is the first non-collab bow user that is focused on fast attack range DPS and she's very well-rounded with her skills, her ult, her stats, they all complement each other amazingly. Bow Valks so far have an advantage in which their ability to use their skill is open regardless of what bow they are using. So that forces the bow itself to be focused on stats and having the bow is just a bonus at this point, not a requirement. So her bow skill is her best ability. She can drop the required SP for her ult from 100 to 70 for a couple of seconds as well as triggering the automatic charge attack. This, this makes her gain SP rapidly and with her short ult cooldown it gives you the perfect balance of just continuous ult after the other and amazing SP regain and amazing DPS and attack points. Now, why am I focusing about her ult? Well, her all of her package comes just to boost her ult, honestly. Once her ult triggers, she covers the sky with a flower and every charge attack makes beams jump back and forth and deal tons and tons of continuous damage. It's almost like a cheat code, I swear. Finally, upon her death, she engulfs herself in a crystal that gives her a full HP health bar without losing any of SP, any of her alt, anything. She just goes back right to the battle. She even evades immediately. Now, in order to get the most out of her, you should probably consider the Stigs and the team comp. Now, her Stigs will be immediately farmable and they will be the third gen of Dirac which would give FTP player the chance to get her stigs and even the ability to get her in the shop. And in my opinion, any 5 star physical stig would do it, especially Michelangelo, Kafka, Dirac and even Marco Polo as a start. But just remember that she gets the same treatment as Mei or Teresa Battlesuit because of her fast paced gameplay. Now let's talk team comp. Fischl is absolutely the best for her, as well as the Hersher of Sentience, Kangming, and Celestial Hymn. I know Fischl 
would sound out of place for you because she's a thunder vulk, but her power isn't in her attributes, it's in her skills. Fischl is an SB factory, literally. Oz works even when she leaves the battle, as well as her ult, to get you a great amount of SP, and her weapon skill can trigger QTE, so support wise she's optimal honestly, as well as her being ranged so you don't even have to worry a lot about her HP. Next is the Hersher of Sentience. Hersher of Sentience is extremely useful skill wise, and her ult, followed by Alicia's ult, can get you through Memorial Arena and Abyss in a matter of seconds, which is truly insane. Finally, Kongming, Celestial Hem would be great as both of them can do a lot of damage without being on the field for Kongming and the cross and the ult for Celestial Hem will gather like all of the enemies and combo with Alicia so the answer for the second question is yes, it's a big yes. Alicia is absolutely FTP friendly. Finally, let's talk lore. When we first met Alicia, she told us that the real Alicia is out there doing something important. That was our first clue for her being alive until now. Later on, we learned that she was working against Mobius and Dr. May as she didn't believe in their unethical ways of doing stuff and saving humanity. We learned through memories as well that she has a unique ability with her crystals. When Hua sacrificed herself in the binding incident 50,000 years ago and was about to die, Elysia covered her in a crystal and told her that she sacrificed so much and now it's time to pay back. Fua gained back her life. When Sakura, upon Sakura's death, she implemented a crystal flower in her grave, and we saw later on Sakura being reborn 50,000 years later. Finally, the most important part is literally in her game mechanics that I just mentioned above. When she is about to die, she engulfs her herself in a crystal and gains a full HP. That shows her rebirth and her vitality ability. Now, in the final memory, memories, before the pioneers went into the cryopods, Kevin mentioned that Alicia is dead. But after everything I said to you, do you still believe that she actually died that easily? And more importantly, she's as strong as Kevin. So what would make Kevin state her death as a fact? Unless he saw her body dying. And that takes me to the next question. Between all of the event Mihoyo could rerun, they decided to go with the event where Kellen managed to switch Sakura's consciousness to a new vessel, Kasumi. And Kasumi was reborn as a blank slate. She didn't remember her past, but she knew she's very good as a ninja. And her real self is actually Sakura. Now, what I believe happened 50,000 years ago, and that's a theory, was that Alicia sacrificed her body, took over a certain body that wasn't casted under the ground or disposed of. That body is Dr. May's body. Dr. Nagamitsu's identity was Elizabeth, a name far from Alicia. Yet, yeah, she had pink hair and a fun personality, almost identical to Alicia. And if you look closely at Dr. Nagamitsu, just put her in comparison with even the maid that we have right now. The similarities are uncanny. And if we look closely into the eyes of both Alicia and Nagamitsu, things start to fit in. Mihoyo doesn't draw the same eyes twice, so for Alicia to share the same eyes with Dr. Nagamitsu is an incredible sign of their correlation. Next, we can remember the conversation between Otto and Dr. Nagamitsu. Is that she didn't tell Durandal everything, but she was throwing rocks in the right way. And by the way, thanks for Winville for the translation. He translated the whole chapter 25 EX um, with him and all of the other captains who were translators 
and put him on document to look at. And that, believe it or not, could explain the theory of Durandal being the real Kiana as an auto successfully transforming Kiana's consciousness into what we know right now as Bianca. That's all I've got for you guys today. Tell me what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you in another video. Bye! And how strong she is.